Levitation. Wikipedia. Levitation is the process whereby an object is held aloft in a stable position without mechanical support via any physical contact. It is accomplished by providing an upward force that counteracts the pull of gravity, plus a smaller, stabilizing force that pushes the object towards a home position whenever it is a small distance away from that home position. A person can levitate themselves, and we will provide some examples, or a person may levitate something else, an object of some sort, or another person. When a person is able to levitate themselves, and has gained a certain level of proficiency, and hence control over their body, they may learn how to physically fly. Note that this is not an out-of-body experience. In an out-of-body experience, the person leaves their body and travels using only their mind. A person who is able to levitate is physically able to move their entire body or another physical object. The Siddhis Buddhism teaches that if after a practitioner achieves a certain degree of realization, spiritual power develops, and it often becomes possible to perform Siddhis. Wikipedia Siddhis are magical powers that are the products of yogic advancement through sadhanas, such as meditation and yoga. This particular city is known as Vayu Gaman City, although Mark Chagall, who painted these pictures, was Jewish. There are several examples of individuals flying reported in the sutras of classical Buddhism and Zen, for example. The story of Pindola Bharadvaja. The venerable Pindola Bharadvaja was one of the Buddha's 16 disciples, named in the Amitabha Sutra. Once, when in a jubilant mood, he said to the faithful, Do you think flying in the sky is magical? I will show you some spectacular acts. He then jumped up into the sky and flew around. The faithful were all impressed and praised him without ceasing. But the Buddha was very displeased upon learning of this incident. He asked the Venerable to come forth and admonished him. My teaching uses morality to change others and compassion to save living beings. It does not use magic to impress and confuse people. Repent for this misbehavior. As such, in general, cities are regarded as possible, but a diversion from a Buddhist's real objectives. In the collection of long discourses, Dhyaya Nikaya, in the Sampasadhanya Sutta, makes it clear cities are divided into two types, one of which is termed ignoble and the other noble. Siddhis are labelled ignoble if the intent of the practitioner is concomitant with intoxicants and worldly aims. In other words, it is possible to employ the fruits of the Siddhis in such a manner that the mundane world, rather than being transcended, becomes even more attractive and one's involvement within it is deepened even further. Siddhis so produced may then become the occasion of a descent into the actual or phenomenal world 
rather than ascent into the real or noumenal. It is common to judge the merits and ability of a sadhu through his siddhis. A blunder indeed. Siddhis are byproducts of concentration. Siddhis have nothing to do with self-realization. Indeed, a sadhu may manifest siddhis due to strong passions and intense desires. And if that be the case, the sadhu may have made no spiritual progress at all. Hans Peter Dewar, Dreamtime William Penn, an American, took a less complicated stance as presiding judge in the trial of the witch of Ridley Creek, who was accused of having ridden on a broomstick. When she voluntarily confessed to these flights, he freed her, since, as he said, he knew of no law forbidding flying about at night. Lachima Lachima is the city name for levitation. It is the control of the effect of the Earth's attraction on the body by developing in each cell the opposite of centrifugal tendency. As such, Lachima is the ability to become weightless or lighter than air. In order to do this, one must be conversant with the concept of the symbolic elements. See our video, The Elements and the Turret Suits. Levitation is achieved through changing one element, such as earth, into another element, such as air. In order to do this, a person may use tapas or sadhanas. Tapas are austere spiritual meditation practices involving self-discipline and solitude. Sadhanas are ego-transcending spiritual practices supporting detachment from worldly things. Ubenga Pity Ubenga Pity is a meditative state known as the transporting rapture. It can lift the body off the floor and still occurs to meditators of current times, both in Thailand and elsewhere. A strong rapture of this kind, as manifested through the higher jhana states, is able to lift the body and transport it or fly over great distances through the air. Teresa of Avila The life of St. Teresa of Avila by herself. Now let us return to raptures and to their most usual characteristics. Very often they seem to leave my body as light as if it had lost all its weight and sometimes so light that I hardly knew whether my feet are touching the ground. But doing the rapture itself the body is very often like a corpse and able to do anything of itself. It remains all the time in whatever attitude it was in when the rapture came on it, seated for example and with the hands open or closed. Walking on water Perhaps the account of levitation best known to Westerners is that of Jesus walking on water. John 6 Jesus walks on the water. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. A strong wind was blowing, and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were frightened. But he said to them, It is I, don't be afraid. St. Joseph of Copatina flies and lifts a cross. 
Friar Herbert Thurston The Physical Phenomenon of Mysticism If we may trust the published narratives of his life, Joseph's is by far the most astounding case of levitation of which we have any record. It would be impossible to give a detailed account of his elevations and flights which seem to have been observed on more than a hundred different occasions. An incident at the Rossella Friary near Copertino, related by his biographer Pastrovici, occurred when a calvary was being erected there by the friars. Two crosses were already placed, but ten persons with united effort could not raise a third, which was 54 palms high, about 36 feet, and very heavy. On seeing this, Joseph, full of ardour, flew about 80 paces, 70 yards, from the door of the friary to the cross, lifted it as easy as if it were a straw, and placed it in the hole prepared for it. St. Joseph was treated very badly by his fellow monks, and remained in an almost perpetual state of high emotion, caused by his religious fervour and his continual ill-treatment. The Roman Catholic Online Encyclopedia Joseph, for 35 years, was not allowed to attend choir, go to the common refectory, walk in procession, or say Mass in church, but was ordered to remain in his room. Evil-minded and envious men even brought him before the Inquisition, but Joseph retained his resigned and joyous spirit submitting confidently to divine providence. Abraham Lincoln, Nettie and the Levitating Piano Abraham Lincoln, 1809-1865, was the 16th President of the United States, serving from March 1861 until his assassination in April 1865, and he used the services of a medium called Nettie Colburn, a trance medium. Ruth Montgomery, A Gift of Prophecy In early February of that year, Mrs Lincoln sent word that she would like to bring some friends to the lorries for another seance with Nettie. The President had not expected to go along but at the last moment did so. Among others present were Colonel Simon P. Case of Philadelphia, ex-Congressman Soames, and a Major who accompanied the President. At the beginning of Nettie's trance, while Mrs. Bell Miller played the piano, a spirit force allegedly lifted it off the floor. Lincoln, Soames, Case, and the Major seated themselves simultaneously on the piano to try to hold it down, but it continued to rise and fall in time to the music. When one of the men remarked that no one would believe them about the piano, Lincoln observed, This is Natty. You should bring such a person here, and when the piano seems to rise, have him slip his foot under the leg and be convinced by the weight of evidence resting upon his understanding. Table Tilting with D.D. Home One of the most talented natural trance mediums was D.D. Home. And it is amusing to note that table lifting became so commonplace it was almost discounted in the accounts. Experiences in Spiritualism with Mr. D. D. Home by Vaucant Adair Introduction by the Earl of Dunraven Wyndham Thomas Wyndham Quinn 1841-1926 to We had a seance in the evening. There were present Home, Mr. Jenkin, Mrs. Hennings and myself Nothing very remarkable occurred, at least I do not remember anything. The usual manifestations took place, such as the table moving and raps were heard, 
The table, a light card table, was lifted off the ground completely. During the first part of the seance, the manifestation seemed all directed to home. Afterwards, the table was in the same way as at the first seance, moved up against me. Summary This is but a small selection from the observations we have on our website. But we have given you examples of a person levitating themselves, Teresa of Avila, a person flying, Pindola Barad Vaja, a witch flying on a broomstick, person walking on water, Jesus, and modern days, Dynamo Magician. A person levitating and flying, St. Joseph of Cupertino. A person able to levitate a piano, Letty Coburn. A person able to levitate a table, Dee Dee Home. Although, as you can see, such skills are not restricted to these people. Remember, however, that the evidence is overwhelming in favour of it happening.